Welcome to Case Study with the BizDoc. We are live in Boca Raton, Florida at Valuetainment's new headquarters. The BizDoc is in the house, and this week we're talking houses with Zillow. Wait, 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 this is the podcast. Where's my board? Where's my board? There we go. That's more like it. Zillow, the fantastic app on your phone that you can now check rentals at and have been able to check housing prices and what's for sale and all the key information since 2006. I'm going to take you through the origins of the company, the venture capital, the IPO, how they have got from there to today with a high flying stock and then lessons for you and me as I like to say whether you're operating Zillow or you're operating a t-shirt sales company in Berlin, there are lessons for entrepreneurs of all sizes and all places around the world from the Zillow case study. Let's dive in. It all starts in Seattle back in 2005. Rich Barton and Lloyd Frank founded the company. They got about $32 million in Series A financing. This is the venture stage. It would raise $87 million. Then in 2006, they raised about $25 million more, their Series B. And then a Series C in 2007, they raised about $30 million. All total about $87 million into three years. And what they were doing was putting information about homes for sale into a nice compact website that later became an app that was introduced in 2009. Remember 2005, 2006, 2007, the app universe wasn't really at high speed yet. And then in 2009, they get that iOS app gets introduced. It was the, they also had a thing called the mortgage marketplace. So you could maybe get information on available mortgages and things and research a house. So the nascency here and the birth of Zillow was all established. Very exciting time compressed. And as you can see, in just six years, they decide to go public. And about the time they go public, they hire a gentleman, Raskoff, who becomes the CEO, and Rich Barton takes more of a board position. So the IPO goes at about $20 a share here in July 19, 2011. About that time, they also added agent ratings. So take a look. You have a database of houses. You can find out the house you like. You can filter it by the things you want, how many bedrooms. You're doing a lot of things on there, along with getting kind of an estimate of value. You can check out uh, real estate agent rankings and also the mortgage marketplace. Then in 2013, they bought Street Easy, which covered the New York market. So now they've added some coverage of the New York market and used the fact that they're public, they had some currency, some cash, and they go out and they buy Street Easy. So now they've got listings, they've made in acquisitions, and we get into 2014, 2015, and they go and they buy Trulia. So now they've made another acquisition. They're expanding their effectiveness, expanding what they're doing when it comes to home listings. Now, then came the point of controversy. Here we get to here. And there is a lot of controversy around a thing called the Z estimate. And the Zillow estimate was there with each listing and it would estimate the value of the home. This was now wreaking havoc because Zillow was becoming very popular and it was wreaking havoc with agents. So you go to list your house on the market and you talk to your agent and she convinces you to list it, say, for $100,000. But then you look on Zillow and Zillow is taking the information there and it shows your house because they've pulled information from the multiple listing service or whatever other um, resource databases they had and it says 107,000. You say to your realtor, hey, you know, I want to get the most for my house. I know I can't ask 200,000 for it, so I'll never sell it, but we're listing at 100,000. I trusted you, Mr. or Miss Realtor, and instead here on Zillow it's saying my house should be 106,000 created a great controversy, realtors were upset, people were upset, multiple listing services were upset because they were providing listings to agents and they were the authority. Realtor.com was upset. There was a lot of people throwing rocks at Zillow because let's face it, the, you know, the analysis to make the Z estimate was a little off. Well, in response to that, you know, they decide 
hey, how are we going to fix this? And so you can invest in yourself to do it. But they did something clever and innovative. Along the way, there is a report that came out that said the Z estimate was as much as an average of $14,000 off on what the homes would ultimately sell for. So there was some analysis there that went out there that said, hey, you know, we're looking at home sales. Here's what you said. Here's what happened. Zillow's usually off an average of $14,000. Now, that's a lot of money when you're thinking average home in America, say $200,000, $250,000, something like that. And so they come out and they announce the AI challenge. And they said they will give a million dollars to a team that comes up with the best solution to, for AI to have a better estimate and a more accurate estimate of the value of the house. So they open it up. There were 3,800 teams from 91 countries countries that went out there because they were all running for a million dollar first prize is whose AI engine gives a better estimate of the value and the ultimate selling price of the house so that they could plug it into Zillow and make it better. So I would think this is something the company did very well because you had all the stuff going on with appraisals. I got thunder and lightning clouds and an oops here because Zillow was really taking it. People were upset about this and picking on them. They were the new guy in the market and they were also taking turf from multiple listing services and realtor.com. So naturally people were very happy to point out, oh, see these bunch of Silicon Valley people, actually from Seattle, you know, they're, they're wrong. They're, they made their little app, but they're messing it up and they're screwing it up for the rest of us because all these consumers are looking at Zillow regarding buying their house. Well, all that was true except one thing, these guys were inventors and they were entrepreneurs. So they set out and made this contest and guess what? Out of 3,800 teams, 91 countries, then in 2019, they awarded the winner and paid the million dollars. So there you have it. So now this shows you kind of how entrepreneurs work through problems. It was over from 2017-19, so it was a 24-month period for them to get the AI in to help make the Z estimate more accurate. In the meantime, they introduced Zillow Offers and they add Canada. Now what was Zillow Offers? Zillow Offers was going out there to actually become an investor and a broker buying and selling home properties. Like maybe they like the price for your house, they buy it from you and maybe they're the ones that sell it later. But the point was now they're adding something else. So let's take a look at how the disruption expanded from just listings. So you start over here where you're listing houses, you add agent ratings, you add estimating value, you have a big controversy about your value being off, you add AI to get it right. So this is a great chapter, I think, of how they got it right. I don't see this as a negative. I see this, okay guys, our original software designers, what we made wasn't perfect, do the AI challenge, find somebody to fix it, let's go. In the meantime, they were still expanding. They weren't standing still. Then they add, you know, they had the mortgage marketplace, financing, and now buying where they're actually investing. So let's take a look at revenue and let's take a look at where the stock price went with all that, because that's kind of a compressed look at it. Oh, and by the way, um, at the IPO, Raskoff was the CEO, but then Barton comes back in 2019. You can take a look at this. So Barton, the founder, Barton comes back. I don't think that's a mistake. Steve Jobs came back to Apple, as you may recall. So about the time of the IPO, they had just, just about crossed over $100 million in revenue. Matter of fact, the year they went out, uh, 2011, it was 60. $100 million with about a $12 million loss in 2012. $200 million revenue with about a $43 million loss in 2013. $325 million, okay, now we're serious. And $148 million loss in 2014. $644 million in revenue, $220 million loss in 15, $846 million revenue, uh, $94 million loss. So look at this, the first five years of being public, they go from 60 to 846. That's more than 10X, actually 12X, 13X of the original IPO revenue. That's pretty amazing. They would crack a billion in 2017 with $119 million loss. And then 1.3 billion the following year, $305 million loss. And then the Zillow offers and the markets come out. Let's look at what happened. They went from 1.3 billion to 2.7 billion in 2019, went from a $305 million loss to $162 million loss. 
Barton is back as the CEO, then the following year they go to 3.9. So take a look at this. 1.3 and 1.3 would be 2.6. So they jumped 2x. Then they added another 1.3. So they like took 2019, added a 2018 to it, and that's what they did in 2020. 3.9 billion and $41 million loss. And when you're talking these billions here, these hundreds of millions is not massive loss numbers. Remember, Amazon was losing money for a long time, yet they were cash flow positive and a lot of the good things going on. So when you've got this growth here, take a look at this. The AI comes back, they're buying and investing, and all of a sudden the stock, which had gotten above 50 here, above 50 there, suddenly rockets up to almost $200 a share. I think it was over $200 at one point. And there was this one word for what happened to the stock there, and that is, damn! That is a huge jump during the COVID year with housing prices going up and a lot of things happened that were positive for the real estate market and low interest rate mortgages in 2020, even though COVID had hit. And so they were on a rocket to Mars, by the way, that's a, and they're borrowing a um, Elon Musk rocket and that's Elon Musk's little red car that he bolted to the rocket and shot into space. And they're heading to Mars. Um, I'm not a stock analyst, so I can talk like this. With 110 million listed homes and 200 million uniques and a $33 billion market cap that's more than doubled in the course of a year, you can see Zillow has added all of this to it. They kept adding and adding and adding. So let's take a look at the lessons for you and me. Remember, this is a 15-year story now that's got a lot of positive growth tips that we can apply to any entrepreneurial business. The first, stay focused. You can see what they focused on, and even when they hit a bump in the road, they stayed focused and found a way to get through it. And get it right or get IT right. This is a major IT opportunity they have here to get the IT and the software technology correct so that their Z estimates would be you know, acceptable and reputable. And by the way, nobody in the traditional industry wanted them to get it right because when they get it right, they become more powerful, more of an authority, more entrenched, and more squeezing all the incumbent companies that had had the real estate market to themselves for 50 years. Then vertical integration in due time. They didn't do everything all at once. Look at how they went from listings to the mortgage marketplace to the agent ratings. When I walk through this, you notice the integration is all through the stack because you get a realtor, you list a house, then there's an appraisal for the buyer, then there's a mortgage and the buyer, and then you close on the house with escrow. So you see there's like a flow of services and things that are all part of the transaction of buying and selling a house. And they were that's called vertical integration where you keep adding that stuff in. So do it in due time. As they were able to, they did it in due time. And now they're all the way out here where they're a real estate investor buying houses. And if you can get there and you own the stack, which few achieve, and this really isn't one for small businesses or small entrepreneurial companies, but a vision you might have in your heart, if you can own the stack like they have come to do over a 15 year period, Few achieve it, but you can become dominant. And I happen to think that there is a next chapter over the next five years for Zillow, and they are just getting warmed up. When you take a look at the Zillow offers was in 20 markets in 19, they announced their 25th market in 2020. Stay tuned for more announcements of how many markets they're in throughout 2021 and beyond. And we are here in the first quarter of 2021 when we did this case study originally, for those of you that are watching in the future. This is gonna keep going and driving and they have got the whole stack here lined up. We've made very sharp uh, acquisitions, brought original leadership back and it's driving here and I don't think that's any mistake to now 110 million listed homes, 200 million monthly uniques, the US and Canada, and you can see that Zillow is a great example of a startup that has gone end to end, from venture stage to public stage, to established public stage, to getting over a crisis period, maybe one or two, to really accelerating to the future as it all comes together and as the market was right there for them in 2020. That's a great end to end story. I am a fan of the Zillow story. 
and I am a fan of Rich Barton. So as you can see, there's a lot of small lessons that you can learn in there with your business from Zillow, who has gone end to end very successfully. Well, that's what I think, but what do you think? Leave a comment below. I answer as many as I can. And when you're there, subscribe to Value Team and Economics and hit the bell. You'll get notifications of great new case studies and other wonderful content here on Value Team and Economics. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.